Hey guys, and welcome back to Revenge of the Remakes. I know it's been a while since I've done one of these. It's just they, they just take a long time to make. But I figure it's November and it's not Thanksgiving yet. I have one more week, one more video before I do my Thanksgiving video, which you'll see what that is next week. And I was thinking I haven't done a remake video in a while and watching these movies again, I definitely have some thoughts. Revenge of the Remakes. Footloose and Footloose. Yes, this week I'm going to be comparing Footloose from 1984 to Footloose in 2011, which probably nobody asked for, but we got it anyway. And Footloose is an interesting one to talk about because it came out in what I can only describe as the dancical craze of the 80s. You know, they weren't musicals exactly. Nobody really sang in them. You know, your Dirty Dancings, your Footloose, and your Flashdance, those are the three that immediately come to mind. I'm pretty sure there were more. If you got any that I missed, drop them in the comments because there is something about those movies that definitely feel like musicals, but they don't follow the traditional tropes of a musical. And I gotta say, Footloose has to be my favorite of that era because Footloose has a quality about it that feels like an archetypal story. You know, it's a young kid, goes to a new town, and there's this rule, this prohibition against music and dancing. And he's got to fight the power, and maybe the town will learn the error of their ways and not be so strict on everything. And that basically is the formula behind Footloose. It's not that complicated. You've seen it mimicked or replicated in a bunch of other stuff. The one that actually pops into my mind first is the episode of Avatar The Last Airbender when Aang goes to the Fire Nation school and they can't dance, and it is literally just Footloose all over again. It's actually kind of weird that they even had that in Avatar. It doesn't really match, but they did it. And in 2011, we got the remake, which does, well, basically the exact same thing, just with a fresh coat of paint. And actually, the coat of paint ain't even all that fresh. Yeah, they got some younger actors, and we'll talk about them. But really, the storyline is remarkably similar. They did not change anything, or hardly anything. They did change some things, but they're pretty small. Although when you add them up, they do show the main problem with replicating something like Footloose is that Footloose works because it was kind of an original concept and there are all these things working in its favor kind of inadvertently and a big part of that is just the simple fact that it came out in the mid 80s and they could use pop songs that were modern and I don't know if it's because of this movie or just the popularity of the songs on their own but those songs have really become cultural touchstones people recognize them and if you're gonna do a remake in 2011 the big question is how much of that original soundtrack do you bring back for the sake of nostalgia or do you use modern 2011 songs to make it feel fresher, more contemporary, just like how Footloose was fresh and contemporary in its day. But nostalgia is a very powerful thing and I'm pretty sure the only reason that this movie got remade was because of 80s nostalgia. But before we get into all that, let's talk about the cast because the cast in the original is probably as iconic as the music itself because we've got Kevin Bacon in what I think was his first starring role. It was definitely his big break. It's what made him a household name. He was in a slasher movie. I think it was Friday the 13th before this. It's been a while since I've seen it, but I'm pretty sure he was in that. But Footloose really brought him into public consciousness, not just as a person who dies at Camp Crystal Lake, but as a leading man. And Kevin Bacon truly is great in this movie, but there is one drawback, and it's that he was not a dancer or really had any dancing skill prior to being cast in this movie. So there is quite a bit of stunt doubles and dancing doubles, especially in some of the scenes when he's doing the gymnastics. Kind of obvious that that's not exactly how Kevin Bacon looks during some of those shots, but the way it's edited, it's not that distracting. But that isn't to say he does no dancing throughout the entire movie. He does dance, and he dances pretty well. However, in the remake, I'm pretty sure the casting director went out of their way to cast actual dancers so that they didn't need to hire as many doubles for a lot of these dance routines. They could just shoot the actor doing it, save some money, save some time. But when you favor dancing over acting, you might get some subpar actors, or you'll get actors that aren't big names. And granted, the original cast weren't big names either, but here leading the cast is Ren McCormick. We have Kenny Wormald, and I could not tell you anything that he's been in before or after Footloose, and I don't know, maybe there's a reason for that. And I guess I can kind of see why, because he doesn't have the same commanding presence that Kevin Bacon had in the original. But that's not to say he's bad or bad in the role. He acts fine, he delivers the lines fine, he dances 
dances phenomenally. I would say he definitely has one on Kevin Bacon in the dancing department because when he is dancing, you understand why he got the part. The dude is incredibly talented in that regard. I would just say that he doesn't have the same kind of acting chops or charisma that Kevin Bacon had, especially when he has to do those really serious acting moments, which Footloose has a good deal of serious moments. I think people forget about that. It's not all dancing and having fun. There's a lot of family trauma and grief that these characters are dealing with, and their expression of that is channeled through the dancing, but when they're not dancing and they're just sitting in their homes or with each other, it has a handful of pretty somber moments. And that's really why I think the original made the better choice in favoring actors over dancers, because you can kind of fake the dancing, but you really can't fake the acting. And that also extends to Ariel in both versions. In the original, she's played by Laurie Singer, and in the remake, she's played by Julianne Huff. And again, one favors the acting and one favors the dancing. And Julianne Huff, great dancer, incredibly talented again, but also not the best actress, especially in the scenes where she's standing up to her father, the Reverend. The delivery from Laurie Singer just feels so much more natural and personal and emotional than when Julianne Huff delivers it. It just kind of feels like she's just reading the lines. But then we come to Willard, and this is an interesting one because in the original we have Chris Penn, you know, from Reservoir Dogs, who's been in other things. But Willard has to be my favorite character in this movie. In any version, Willard's awesome because, like me, he can't dance at all at the start of this movie, and by the end he becomes a great dancer, which I guess that's where the comparisons to me end. But he is still hilarious. He's the guy that Ren becomes friends with early on in the movie. He teaches him about the ways of Beaumont, what's legal, what's illegal, trying to keep him out of trouble, and in some cases being his literal bodyguard. And the actor that they got to bring Willard to life in the remake is a very young, still very talented Miles Teller. And Miles Teller, he's everywhere now, but in 2011, he was still kind of an unknown. They did take a risk. And also, don't think Miles Teller is a trained dancer. I could be wrong on that, but he doesn't strike me as the kind of guy that's actually properly trained in dance like the other two actors I mentioned are, but seeing Teller's work in stuff like Whiplash and Top Gun Maverick, he seems like the type of actor will actually go out and learn the skill or get at least good enough to fake it for the sake of the camera before he shows up on set. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if Miles Teller just did a bunch of dance lessons to prepare for this part. But he is definitely my favorite casting choice in the remake, and he's the one that really goes toe-to-toe -to -toe in my brain with the original. And they're both hilarious, they both have great comedic delivery, they both perfectly embody that simple-minded, redneck, small-town hick energy that Willard is supposed to have. And yeah, they're both great, but I guess if I had to pick a favorite, it'd probably go back to the original just by default. It's the one that I think of every time I think of Willard right away, but Miles Teller's right there, so close. And the last casting choice I'll talk about is the, I guess, villain of the piece, but I feel weird calling him the villain. He's the antagonist, but he's not really a villain because both movies do a really good job at humanizing him to a degree where you understand why he is at odds with our teenage heroes, and that is Errol's father, Reverend Moore, the preacher of the town. After this accident that happened years ago, everybody got super paranoid about drugs and alcohol and dancing and music, and they just outlawed everything, especially the music and the dancing. And it would be so easy for this movie, both the original and the remake, to just make Reverend Moore out as this religious fanatic, this zealous guy that takes the Bible way too far and is just totally irredeemable, because that is generally how Hollywood likes to depict Christians and especially pastors in these types of movies. But I will say with Dennis Quaid in the remake and John Lithgow especially in the original, you get a lot more humanity out of this character than you might expect. And both actors do a really good job. And in comparing these two guys, it's actually really hard because the performances are very similar in the sense that you see the man behind the man. You understand all the fear and regret that motivates his pretty extreme actions throughout this movie. But ultimately, I do think I have to go again with the original, because John Lithgow, from the moment he opens his mouth, has a very strong presence, but there's a shakiness or a kind of a trembling quality in the way he talks that just makes him feel so much more vulnerable as a person. And as you go through this movie and he reveals more and more of who he is and why he's doing the things he's doing, and the times when he's really forced to question his own beliefs, you really get a sense that his walls are being torn down brick by brick. Well, Dennis Quaid, you still get that a bit, and especially towards the end, you understand more why he's doing the things he's doing. And it, again, it follows beat for beat the same plot as the original. But Quaid, especially early on, comes off as much more intimidating and stoic for about the first half of this movie. So for me, I guess I just prefer the Reverend more that feels a little bit more vulnerable. But now that we got the cast out of the way, let's get into why I don't think Footloose works 
necessarily as a remake. I think it works great as an original movie. I love the movie. And if I'm in a certain mood, I guess I could enjoy the remake because again, it's so close. But for me, what really doesn't work with this remake is the music choice. And again, the movie tries to have it both ways where it is going to be super faithful to the original. We're going to have some music return. Of course, we have the Footloose song, the Kenny Loggins classic, but we have Blake Shelton singing it, which okay, I guess, you know, remake, you do a cover. Fair enough. And Blake Shelton's version isn't bad, but it does give the movie a bit more more of a country western identity which is interesting because that's not really the vibe I got from the original yeah this is supposed to be somewhere in like the bible belt of America again it's very vague where this town is and I think it's intentionally vague but in the original all the music was pop music it wasn't any specific genre it was just whatever was big that would be playing on the radio or whatever a kid could smuggle into town on a little cassette so because of that the soundtrack is very pop and aggressively 80s but in the remake they do give a kind of country western twang or style to a lot of the songs, which on the one hand does give the town more of an identity, but also it's not the town that's really supposed to have that identity because the town doesn't celebrate music and all the music that should be playing in this movie should be kind of foreign to the town, which is why I do favor the original in this regard because it is consistent with the narrative. All the music does feel foreign, but Footloose isn't the only classic song that the remake brings back. We also get Holding Out for a Hero, kind of. We get it twice. The first time we hear it is very random. It's just a moment where Ren is moping and he pulls out the picture of his dead mom, which yeah, Ren doesn't have a mom in this version or a dad. He's just kind of on his own. And this is a tangent, but bear with me. I do think it's weird that both of Ren's parents are gone in the remake where Ren's mom was still in the picture in the original. Because on the one hand, I could see it working better in the remake with more of a feeling of isolation, that he has nobody. Nobody's backing him up. He's alone in this town where in the original he had his mom in his corner. But they don't really do that in the remake because in order to get those classic dialogue scenes that you remember from the original put in the remake that originally were between Ren and his mom, you gotta have his uncle that he's staying with also be on his side and fighting the town with him. So in that sense, the uncle basically replaces the mom where the uncle was definitely on the side of the town in the original. So you just kind of have to wonder why get rid of the mom in the first place? Was it only to have this sad, mopey version of Holding Out for a Hero play over this one scene? I don't know. But that is the first time we hear Holding Out for a Hero. And the second time is a very brief electronic moment at the very end of the game of chicken, which in the remake is this demolition derby. They get rid of the tractors, they're in buses, which okay, it's kind of like six of one, half a dozen of the other, but they don't even use holding out for a hero while the demolition derby's going on, where in the original it played throughout that entire sequence. No, you only get it at the very end when Ren is victorious, then you hear it playing very much in the background. It's actually very easy to miss if you're not paying attention and looking out for it. So that's kind of a weird choice. And the only other song that was in the original that makes its way into the remake is Let's Hear It For The Boy, which has to be my favorite part of either version because it's the montage when Miles Teller or Chris Penn take your pick, learn how to dance, and it's really funny in both versions. The comedy's there. The fact that you can actually see him learn how to have rhythm, and this might just be my own headcanon, but the fact that Miles Teller is going from having absolutely no rhythm to having enough rhythm to dance with the best of them in this movie. I just wonder if after he graduated, he used this newfound rhythm to play the drums at one of the best music colleges that he could find. But maybe that's just a coincidence. And the actual music that plays in both versions is Let's Hear It For The Boy. I'm pretty sure it's the original recording in both versions. But I do have to mention that the remake has at least a little bit of creativity because this sequence starts with the song playing over a karaoke machine that Ren's little cousins, the two little girls, are singing and they're trying to teach Willard how to dance to the music and he's just failing miserably. And even though it doesn't really make sense for them to have a karaoke machine in a town that is outlawed dancing and music, it is still pretty adorable to watch. And maybe I'm just getting soft in my older age, but you know, it's cute. But now we come to what's probably the biggest disappointment with the remake, in my opinion, and it is the complete butchery of the Never song. Because in the original, when Ren is feeling his lowest, he goes to this abandoned warehouse to let off some steam, and you have the song Never, which I'm pretty sure was an original song by Kenny Lawson. Feel free to fact check me on that, but that feels right. And he just dances, does gymnastics all over the place. It's super physical and intense. The lighting is awesome because it's mostly silhouetted probably to hide the stunt doubles, but it just feels so moody and angsty and you just really get the physicality of this scene so well. And also that song just slaps. It's great and it fits the tone of the scene 
perfectly. And I was thinking if there's ever a song to bring back in the remake, it is that one. And they don't. They just play kind of generic music over this scene. And a lot of the shots and compositions are very similar from version to version. The dancing also very similar, although you do see a lot more of Ren's face in the remake because he's actually doing his own dancing and his own stunts. But without the music, it just feels kind of watered down and they don't really do anything innovative with the shots and with the dancing. It just all feels kind of recycled. And if you actually want a pretty well done reinterpretation of this scene, Scream from High School Musical 3. You know, the Zac Efron song, his solo, where he's just letting off steam. Narratively, it fulfills the exact same purpose as never. And there's also a few not so subtle references to this scene in High School Musical 3. But unlike the remakes, Scream actually takes chances and tries new things with the sequence. You know, the wall spinning, the basketballs that are horrible CGI. But this is not a review of High School Musical 3. I'm trying to keep this as focused as I can. But the original just did it better. And really after that, the movies wrap up the exact same way. He has a big speech in front of City Hall. He says basically the same thing in both versions. Although I will say, the thing about Kevin Bacon's performance here that for me works better than in the remake is that Kevin Bacon brings a vulnerability where you really feel like he is intimidated going up against this council. Because you get a sense that Ren McCormick never really had to do anything like this before back in his old town. I think it was Chicago. And that he's really not the kind of person that usually steps up, causes a disturbance fights for liberty but he just kind of has to because that's the position he's in now and you do sense in his voice and his performance that he really doesn't want to be there but he's gonna push through anyway and that actually probably endears us to his character more than anything else he does in this movie. Whereas in the remake, Ren just kind of comes off as snarky and cocky and very confident, which, you know, isn't bad, but he doesn't have that vulnerability or awkwardness that was very present in the original. That's pretty much all I have to say about these movies. Again, narratively, plot-wise, they follow the exact same plot structure. There's not really any surprises or risks taken with a narrative structure. They're very similar. But if you're asking me, the remake just does not hold a candle to the original. The original for me has so much more personality and charm. And it's not perfect. I will say that the remake does have generally better dancing, more impressive dancing. But what the original was able to get away with by using the actors as much as they could and supplementing with stunt doubles, I think works just as well. And on top of the music is just all around better in the original. It's more consistent. It doesn't try to balance nostalgia with doing something new. It just is. Is. It came out at the right time, right place, and it's a classic for a reason. But now I turn it over to you guys. What do you think about Footloose? Have you seen both versions? Whatever you think, let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more content and hit the notification bell to be notified every time I upload a video. As always, I'm Colby. This is my Nerdy Talk, and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.